Uh, today we understand now uh, the use of statistics for quality control. This is part of uh, expression for subject statistical quality control. Uh, basic concepts that we are studying here is what is that variable and attribute data, the procedure to plot the SQC charts and understand its patterns, and then what are the different types of causes, chance and assignable causes, and a little bit introduction to process capability. Now, uh, very basic concepts of uh, uh, statistic is nothing but uh, mean, is nothing but the average, median is again the average or the middle two uh, values, and the mode is the number which occurs most. Before directly entering into what do you mean by statistical quality control, let us understand the concept of variation first. This concept talks about, uh, is all about statement that no two cases are made exactly identical though it is not impossible but it is not necessarily economically viable all the time so variations are always there in some of the cases to bring economy into manufacturing the variations are incorporated so uh, uh, variation may be in microns or it could be in mms so it's totally depending upon the requirements the basic causes for variations could be maybe poor raw material, maybe machine variations, maybe tool wear, faulty uh, work working devices, maybe measurement errors, environmental errors, etc. Whatever it may be. So, such kind of a uh, variations if you start measuring, the data generated. The data could be of basically two categories. First is called as attribute data, the second is variable data. So here, what we could see, the attribute data is, which can be counted here on off kind of a thing. So variables, data which are, can be physically measured and continuous scales are available. Weight can measure, dimension we can measure, temperature we can measure. So briefly if you understand, the length in millimeters we can measure, standards and friction cost we can measure. Number of breakdowns could be attribute. Average daily temperature, we can measure the variations. Proportion of defective. So, number of spares. Lead time is again variable. Mean time between failure, MTBF, it's variable. And if you plot such kind of a data graphically, which will help us, which definitely will going to help us to analyze in better fashion. But if you take the example, of what you plot in the form of histograms, actually it cannot consider the things are happening or changing with respect to time. So we need to plot such kind of a data that we collected with respect to the time. So we can take some necessary action to control if the deviations are out of control limits. So such kind of a charts are called as control charts. So actually control chart in definition it could be a statistical technique for controlling the quality of product being manufactured. There are basically two broad categories of control charts. Number one is variable chart, the second is attribute chart. The variable chart is all about the chart that were plotted from the data from the quality characteristics which can be measured. Similarly, uh, as far as attribute chart is concerned, it's plotted from the data which is <coughs> just we can understand whether the dimension or quality characteristics is conforming to the requirements or not. it's not conforming. So likewise, if you compare it to analysis parameters here, for example, maintenance, uh, as far as data is concerned, it's, it's uh, the cost of maintenance is high in case of variable cost of maintenance for attribute is less. Now here, the sample size, if you look at variable chart plotting, requirement is small as far as attribute chart requires large size of data. Now, if we take the example of the charts which can be categorized under this variable x bar and r chart and attribute chart is p and c is also there in this particular slide. Variable data used for plotting x bar chart, r chart or individual charts it could be in simple x chart. As far as attribute data if you have you can plot P chart and NP chart for the number of defectives, C chart and U chart for understanding 
if you have the data of uh, only defects in numbers. So, now this is a simple guideline when to select which type of charts. If it is variable, you can go to the X bar and R chart, it could be X bar and S chart. If it is attribute, again they are divided into two subcategories like defective components or defects. So if you are having data only related to defectives, you can go and plot a P chart in P chart. If you have got data related to the number of defects, then you can plot C chart, U chart. So such kind of a charts, if you plot, we can you know, see its application in terms of it's used for establish the statistical control, monitor the process, trigger out the signal when it is going out of the control. It also helps us to understand what is the process capability. Now let's understand the process for developing these control charts. The first step is uh, to understand first what is the quality characteristics, how to measure it. Once you understand how to measure it, then start measurement and prepare the data. Once the data is collected, recorded, then calculate appropriate statistics and start plotting that. Now this is the example shown here. Now you can see there are so many uh, values which you have collected as a data and you just start plotting on the graph. So you can get the graph and for further analysis. Now the next immediate step is to analyze its control limits and again come back and apply it on that chart. So the next immediate action is compute limits. It could be upper control limit, lower control limit. Analyze and interpret with respect to these control limits and average line whether uh, it is moving towards upper control limit or towards lower control limit or it is showing the only center tendency accordingly we will be taking further decisions for controlling the process under evaluation using this control charts. So these are some of the formulas which will be helping you to calculate this control limits. For example, you can see UCL can be calculated using this particular formula. Now here <coughs> in this upper control limit and lower control limit formula, this A2, D and this D4, these all are the standard values. You can you need to collect it from this table, which is again a standard table. These values are depending on number of samples that you are considering and you will be calculating those limiting values and with respect to those limits you can analyze you will get such kind of patterns now here the first pattern if you could see it is shift of process average now up to this stage the process average is somewhat at the center after this there is shifting the process average you need to look at such kind of a process. Now in this case, the process average is continuously varying. It is moving upward again. These maybe uh, set of data may be coming down to near to the lower control limits. Again it is moving. So the shift is again moving up and down. And in this case, it is cyclically moving up and down. So it's a cyclic pattern. As far as this kind of a uh, pattern is concerned, there is no up to this there is central tendency and there the trend has moving near towards lower control limit. Now, once you understand such kind of a uh, once you could uh, plot such kind of a charts it can be used further for analysis now how you can analyze now you can analyze graphically why to analyze to analyze uh, to understand what could be different uh, causes for it so first type of cause could be a chance cause a random cause so most of the points if they are near to the center and in such kind of a pattern if one or two or a few points are reaching towards this control limits the causes could be a chance cause maybe the external um, maybe uncontrollable kind of a things which enter into the process and uh, the process is deviated maybe near to the upper or lower control limit the second is the assignable causes which are visible and their deviations are high as compared with chance causes. So in such kind of a pattern we can analyze it for any inherent or external reasons. In this case it could be maybe because of different process parameters for example maybe presence of air, dirt, temperature and humidity you can specifically assign a cause for this. Yeah there is a shift maybe towards upward and towards 
low specification limits in these two graphs. So such kind of analysis that we can do and assign uh, causes for it. So broad categories I am talking about, the causes are chance causes or assignable causes. So uh, systematically uh, you can assign a particular cause to a particular type of variation here and uh, the second category that I was talking about is a chance cause. You can see the comparator analysis being discussed here on this slide. So here uh, the comparison can help us to even understand. Now the next step is, uh, once you could do that, the next step is to analyze the capability of the process with respect to the specification limits. So with respect to, uh, again, if you compare uh, the concept of uh, quality control, uh, control activities and capability. So this is a simple explanation here. The process is actually capable, but it has gone out of control. So you can take some necessary action and we can bring it back to uh, the control limits. Now, if you go vertically down, it is in control and for some time, but actually uh, the process has got uh, its own inherent capability to remain out of uh, capable. So the process is in control for some time, so not capable. So this is what the region. And this is the region which is a very worst region, which is showing that the pattern is out of control and the causes is showing you the machine itself is not capable and the ideal situation the process is con within control limits and the process capability quantifies that the process is capable so what we discuss still is um, analyze the graph to understand whether the process is within control or not but now we are trying to just understand uh, whether the process is capable to maintain its uh, capability to remain in control limits. So again, you can see the sigma limit you can calculate here, which again help you to understand whether it is falling within control limits and showing that, quantifying that process is capable or not. So the process deviation could be uh, broadly in two ways. One way, either the mean has got shifted from its uh, specified limit of this uh, process ideal process mean uh, an actual process mean is this so this part which is moving out of upper control limit producing scrap or the process deviation which has resulted into uh, such kind of a spray so uh, the points which are lying out of these upper and lower control limits either they are sending it for direct as a scrap or you can consider it for a river so these are the basic two ways in which uh, uh, the process may be get deviated uh, and quantified way in which we can analyze this uh, graph. So always the comparison is with respect to what is the specification limits specified by the designer and what your process is offering. So these are the two uh, graphs which we can overlap with each other and analyze and quantify the process capability. Now uh, we'll stop here to uh, ex to understand more about process capability and uh, how to uh, quantify uh, the chart values and all. We'll see later. So this is what I was talking about. The process is very uh, capable. These are the two uh, limits specified by your designer and manufacturing processes offering uh, your spread like this. So the first situation is the process is very capable, stable and well centered. Second situation is process is capable, stable, centered, but just it is capable. So any deviation will make this process to become uncapable. So it, it will going to lose its capability. So likewise, it has lost here. So uh, we can understand this. Uh, the last one is again very uh, big spread. And so these are comparative analysis and for further reading you can refer this particular book. Uh, I have uh, discussed many things from this book in this particular discussion. Thank you.